Hi friends, Mindy here. I have a quick process video for you today. This is going to be for day two of trusting a good God from by the wall. I am pulling out a couple of plastic sheets here because I'm going to be doing some painting on this page. And um, the paper that I'm using in this journal that I created is some is Bristol Vellum Smooth. So it's going to be able to kind of withstand some um, some paint and that kind of stuff. So I wouldn't say that it's necessarily a mixed media paper, but it is a pretty heavy duty paper. It's, um, just one that I really enjoy using. So the paints that I'm using are all, um, Dina Wakely acrylic paints in the colors of sand, penny, and elephant. This one is elephant and then, um, penny and then also some white gesso. And just as a side note, this color in of the sand is, um, actually really good for kind of Bible pages that have that kind of cream color. If you ever, you know, like me, maybe make a mistake or need to cover something up, this is a color that's pretty similar, um, that you can kind of use just throwing that out there. But, um, I went ahead and added some water to this page. I just sprayed it on, um, because I, like I said, this is pretty, um, heavy duty paper and I didn't want, I want the colors to be able to blend. I didn't want to have like, you know, major streaks. So I'm just going in with my paintbrush here. My paintbrush was wet as well. Um, and I'm just mixing and blending these colors, just taking, um, a little bit of the different colors on my brush. I'm not cleaning my brush in between. I'm going to use a little bit of the gesso to kind of help blend, um, some of these colors together, just adding these in. The penny is actually um, I think supposed to be like more metallic, but when it's mixed kind of with the other colors, that metallic doesn't show through too much. So, um, it ends up being a really good color match for this kit, I think. So you can see here, I just am doing all of this blending and then went ahead and did that on the other side as well. And now I'm going to pull in the stencil. This is a stencil I've had in my stash forever. It's, um, from Balls or Designs and, I assume that you can probably still get your hands on it, but I'm not really sure. Um, cause like I said, I've just, I've had it forever, but, um, what I'm doing is I'm taking a makeup sponge and I am adding the paint kind of, um, the different colors on the sponge at the same time so that they sort of blend together as I'm kind of pouncing. It's really important when you're doing this. Um, you don't want too much paint on the sponge and you also want to make sure you kind of just um, pouncing up and down if otherwise you can go up underneath the stencil and I'm just doing a little bit of this section up here on the top right hand corner and then I'm going to do a larger section down here in the bottom left this is where I'm going to um, put my day um, two number and so I want to have I need to have a little bit more on this side so I'm just going through using those colors of sand and elephant and then I'm going to come through with a little bit of penny kind of right at the edge of these and then while the colors are still wet I'm just kind of dabbing and that will sort of blend them all together so you don't have like you know the solid streaks but it also gives just a little bit of dimension um, to this stencil instead of just a flat um, color I like to do um, particularly with this particular stencil I like to do two colors and kind of blend them together so um, as you can see here I'm pulling out the um, the big the, what's it called the big I outlined um, number set and um, this is from by the well for God and I love these numbers these ginormous numbers they also have an alpha set as well um, and so I am pulling out all the pieces that I'm going to be using for this day and one of those is I, um, I printed all the titles for the days that came with the digitals that you can purchase that coordinate with this kit and I printed those on clear sticker paper but I decided I really wanted that to have a white background so I just added that to some white paper and then trimmed that out and then I stamped the number two with archival ink in hickory smoke I used archival because um this is over an acrylic background and I um distress inks distress oxide really wouldn't dry very well on there um, but then I didn't like the contrast of it. So I'm coming back through now with a Posca paint pen in gray and I just went right over it and colored that in. It's not exactly the right gray. Um, it's just a touch too cool, but it, it will work. Okay. Um, and now I'm going to try to sort of start piecing together how I want this page to be. So I'm using some vintage photo in archival as well to, um, just hit some of the edges of these, um, pieces that I'm using. I'm going to use this uh, medallion as well, but I went ahead and trimmed out some of the white off of there. 
Um, I don't mind having the white on there since I do have some down at the bottom in the title. And the font for the journaling card, it's not completely white, but it's it's white, you know, it's a light color. So um, it's enough white on there that I feel like it's okay. So I'm just kind of laying everything out here. I left this part in because this is just part of my process. I'm just kind of fiddling with everything. I don't always know how everything is going to land when I start working. So um, I at this point, I'm thinking I'm going to use that um, medallion to create a little tuck spot for one of these flashcards. Uh, and that's my intention at this point to do that. Uh, I It ends up not working out, but I'll show you how I work around that. Um, so I think this is how I'm going to do that. And usually whenever I do this, when I use like a die cut to create a tuck spot for a flashcard or a journaling card or whatever, this is what I do. I kind of just hold the flashcard where I want it to be. And then I go around and I add the glue so that I make sure that I have the space for my flashcard and it usually works, but for whatever reason today it did not. And so, um, I don't know if I, the glue that I was using is, is really kind of liquidy and I think maybe I had too much of it. And so it kind of, um, you know, ran where it wasn't supposed to and it made it too hard to get my flashcard in there. So anyway, I went ahead and just trimmed the, um, the edges of that off and I will save those for later. They may show up on another page somewhere. It's just a little bit of an accent. And then I glued down this title, star, um, title starter. This is the trust in the Lord one. And then I'm gluing down the journaling card. I'm going to create a little pocket out of this one as well, uh, to hold a couple of those flashcards. And, um, I, um, at this point I just decided I was going to try, <laughs> I wasn't really happy with that too. Still, it keeps kind of, you know, coming back to me different things. So I'm going to try something else, which I used my Sharpie S gel pen and just went around and outlined, um, that number two. And that's a little bit better. I feel a little bit better about that one. So now I want to create a little, um, hinge on this flashcard. I just used my scoreboard for that. Um, you could certainly use, you know, clear sticker paper or washi tape or whatever to get the, create a tip in. I just created a hinge this time. I just didn't want to add anything else on here. So, um, I just glue, put the glue down on that hinge side and then it will, um, stay. And you can see here is where I'm trying to get that flashcard in there and it's not going to fit. So uh, I'm just going to finish gluing the medallion down and that's fine. And then I will just go ahead and create another little hinge section and glue that down. And then it will be, you know, more like a tip in. Um, it just slid it down a little bit. So not everything was kind of on the same plane. I did think, feel like this side over here on the left needed a little bit of more interest there. So I'm pulling the stencil back out, but instead of using the paint again, because I just didn't want to take the chance of getting paint everywhere. I'm actually going to use the archival ink in vintage photo and just to add a real subtle, um, continuation of that pattern. And then I went in with my, this is a micron pen in a brown color. And I think this is like a 0.5, a really skinny nib. And it just added some marks around the stenciled part, um, or the painted part. And just to kind of add just another little layer of interest is really hard to see on camera, but it's on there. So anyway, if you like this video, I would appreciate it if you gave it a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And until next time, bye.